Welcome to Speak English Now podcast with your host, Georgiana. The podcast that will help you to speak English fluently with no grammar and no textbooks. Hi, everyone. I am Georgiana, your English teacher and founder of SpeakEnglishPodcast.com. My mission is to help you to speak English fluently. Today, I will share with you nine of the most beautiful words in English. And with a point of view story, you will learn grammar only by listening. Okay, let's start. In 2010, during a project to search for words in digitized books, researchers estimated a total of one million words. Yeah, I was a bit surprised by this too. But there's an explanation for all of this. First of all, you need to take into account that they have included different forms of the same word. Also, many words are archaic since they are not used in modern English. Speaking of archaic words, in the second edition of the Oxford English Dictionary, there are approximately 600,000 defined word forms. But that's because it includes many old-fashioned words. And also, the dictionary expands every year to keep up with the new words being invented. However, according to the BBC, the good news is that we only use 170,000 words in English. Yeah, I know, it's still a considerable number of words. But you don't need to know all these words to be able to have a conversation in English. I actually believe it's a mistake to keep track of the number of words you know. If you want to learn English effectively, remember how you learn your mother tongue. And let's face it, you don't know all the words that are included in the dictionary of your mother tongue. But that doesn't stop you from speaking fluently and eloquently. Let's not forget that words are a powerful form of communication. I have selected the ones that I consider to be the most beautiful out of all the words in English. Let's start with the word cherish. The word cherish means having a deep appreciation for something or someone. For example, we all cherish our family, our home, our possessions, and I'm sure that someone in your life cherishes you and the relationship they have with you. Let's continue with the word demure. We use the word demure when we refer to a person who is shy and polite. A demure outfit is a modest one. Let's hear some examples. The girl was dressed very demurely for the occasion. Her clothes were too demure for the occasion. The girl was demure. Word number three. Ebullions. Have you ever seen puppies playing? The word that comes to mind is ebullions. Ebullions means excitement and enthusiasm. Just think of someone who's too noisy, almost euphoric. Example, I remember that when you were a kid, you would always burst into the room with your usual ebullience and talk to everyone. Word number four, elegance. I'm sure you're smiling right now because this is a word you knew. However, it's still one of the most beautiful words in the English language. Let's hear some examples. When she entered the room, everyone was amazed by her elegance. We'll deal with this matter with the utmost diplomacy and elegance. Word number five, effervescent. Instead of calling someone funny, you could say they have an effervescent personality. That simply means they have an attractive and lively quality. We could say that someone who has a happy, light, and cheerful nature has an effervescent personality. 
In this lesson, you can learn new words to enrich your vocabulary and even impress others. Instead of always using words like funny, here's another nicer, different word. So don't be afraid to use it. Let's hear an example. Ever since she was a child, Rachel was effervescent, impulsive, and optimistic. Word number six, elixir. Maybe when you hear the word elixir, you think of magic, perhaps Harry Potter and the elixir of life. Today we use this word to identify a substance that is capable of transforming base metals into gold. Although you could also use the word elixir to describe a cocktail you just made at your home bar. Let's listen to an example. Your mom seems to have taken the elixir of life because I see her getting younger and younger. Word number seven, euphoria. The word euphoria comes from the Greek word healthy. However, it's now used to describe an intense feeling of happiness or joy. The feeling of euphoria can be the result of a fortunate turn. Let's hear some examples. After winning the award, they were euphoric for days. Word number eight, eternity. How can we describe this word? Well, I found some synonyms: forever, always, an unlimited time. These are just a few ways to describe eternity. For example, we know we're not going to be in this situation for an eternity. And that idea is a comfort to us. Word number nine, epiphany. What a beautiful word! But what does it mean? That's right, epiphany is such a cool word. In Greek, the word means manifestation. Epiphany is an aha moment. You have an epiphany the moment you understand something, or you become aware of something very important to you. For example, the legend goes that Isaac Newton had an epiphany about gravity and a falling apple. Let's listen to these beautiful words one more time. Now you can pause and try to remember the meaning of each word: cherish, demure, ebullience, elegance, effervescent, elixir, euphoria. Eternity, epiphany. Did you like these words? Please share with me which word you like the most. And now let's continue with a point of view lesson. Now let's practice some grammar. Don't worry, you don't have to memorize anything. Just listen carefully, because I will tell the same story twice. Are you ready? Let's start. Let's listen to the story from Tom's point of view. Tom was a well-educated and refined man who knew how to make a good impression on women, but despite his talent, he could not impress his beautiful neighbor. Every day, he left her a note using the most beautiful words in English, saying how he admired her elegance, but she never answered him. Until one day. Tom had an epiphany. He realized she didn't understand English well because she came from another country. So Tom had to learn his neighbor's language if he wanted to become friends with her. But Tom had a secret. He had a magical potion. Every time Tom took a sip of the magical drink, he could speak all the languages in the world. So Tom finally talked to his beautiful neighbor, although to his surprise, she had also taken a potion so she could speak English perfectly. It turns out that Tom and his neighbor had a lot in common because they both loved magical potions. After they got married, they went on a honeymoon trip around the world to find the elixir of life that would make them live happily for eternity. Let's listen to the same story from the neighbor's point of view. 
My neighbor Tom seems like a well-educated and refined man who knows how to make a good impression on women. But despite his talent, he can't impress me. Every day he leaves me a note using the most beautiful words in English, saying how he admires my elegance. But I never answered him. Until he had an epiphany, he finally realized I didn't understand English well because I come from another country. So I guess Tom will need to learn my own language if he wants us to become friends. Unless he has a secret, maybe he has a magical potion, for example. Every time Tom takes a sip of the magical drink, he can't speak all the languages in the world. I can't wait to see his face when he finds out that I also took a potion to speak English perfectly. It turns out that Tom and I have a lot in common. We both love magical potions. After we get married, we will go on a trip around the world to find the elixir of life that will help us live happily for eternity. Perfect. It's the end of this point of view lesson. Have you seen the power of the point of view technique? We have checked a lot of grammar by merely using the same story. It's very easy to compare the different structures because you compare them in parallel. Let me ask you something. Is my podcast helping you with your English? Though the podcast is a useful resource because of time limitations, I can hardly develop these lessons, although they allow you to try out my method. But if you're serious about learning English, I recommend my premium English courses. These are complete programs designed to improve your spoken English dramatically. In fact, the courses contain hours and hours of questions and answers and point of view lessons. It's like a podcast episode but multiplied by 100. Get my English courses at courses.speakenglishpodcast.com That's it for today. I will be back next week. Bye-bye. Did you enjoy today's episode? Get the transcript now at speakenglishpodcast.com speakenglishpodcast.com